Welcome to Resilient Love Podcast. Join hosts Quentin and Brianna as they discuss tips on love, life, and business. Let's get into this next episode. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. We're back with another episode of Resilient Love. So, you guys, you guys, you already know we have to start off with our question of the day. So, uh, if this is your first time tuning in, you're listening to Quentin and Brianna, and we are just so excited to have you listening. So, let's go to our question of the day. Our question of the day, Quentin, is... What is the most fascinating thing about the world? The power of technology. The power of technology. Okay. Uh, fascinating thing about the world for me is that there is still a level of care in humanity. You know, even with all the things that seem to take the top of the news report, there are still people who are helping others, saving others, supporting others, and not just stabbing each other in the back or causing havoc. There are people that still get pushing for that American dream of the pursuit of happiness. You know what I mean? And to with liberty and justice for all. There are still people yet fighting for those those things that we said growing up. Right. And the power of technology to expound on is just that we are able to do more than we ever have before. It does have its downside, like everything, but Mm -hmm. on the pro side, we are able to do so much more um, than what our parents were able to. Mm -hmm. Um, We are literally able to work from home and clock in. So that alone is a blessing. Yeah, it's definitely a blessing. So we want to know from you guys, Go ahead, comment below, or if you are listening to this, just think to yourself, what is the most fascinating thing when you think about the world today? Like, find that good thing. Um, So we want you guys to think about that, comment below, and let's go ahead and take a moment and listen to our sponsors. Today, I want to talk about a life asset tool and a financial tool. Yes, life insurance. Life insurance can be one of the most beneficial tools you can have in your tool belt. It helps your family not be in financial distress in your absence. And it also can be used as a financial tool. So today, go ahead and check out Policy Genius to go ahead and add this as an asset to your life and a tool to be in your tool belt for when times shift that you are prepared. All right. Thanks so much for listening to our sponsors. So let's go ahead and get into our topic of the day. Now, we want to go ahead and let you guys know we are doing a spoiler alert. All right. So Q, go ahead and start us off. So today we're going to be talking about Wakanda forever. And we had the privilege of actually doing Wakanda forever in New Jersey, Newark. Well, no, Clifton. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was pretty cool uh, to be out of town and catch the premiere of a movie. But it started off a little different than what I was expecting. Um, it was, I would say, good on the memorial side. Mm-hmm. They truly honored uh, Chad. Right. So... I mean, it. If I'm being totally honest, it was not terrible. <laughs> Wait, how do you go into a movie review and say the opening was good, but it's not terrible? <clears throat> <laughs> Break it down for them. What are the key things about the movie you liked? Let's go with that. Okay, so I like um that they kept the the stance of Wakanda, mm-hmm. the power, 
it being its own nation, mm-hmm. being sustainable. Um, I love that they kept everything original. Actually, they upgraded a little bit. It looked better. More, yeah. More futuristic, but still real. Um, the cast was good. They still had a lot of, a few, quite a few of the, some of the originals. Um, I like the fact, I like the opening scene. Let me start with that one. I like the opening scene where Angela Bassett goes to, I guess, a, I'm sh- not sure. If United it's Nations. United Nations meeting. Mm-hmm. And it's all this criticism, this questioning, and she just keeps her composure. Mm-hmm. She keep that to me, her stance was what a real queen should like not be moved by questions and comments and criticism. And once she opened her mouth, mm-hmm. it was so much substance that it quiet, it, it completely made the room silent. And not only did she quiet the room, but she brung in the proof. Right. So that opening scene that Q was referring to was definitely good because as she was sharing, they were giving you a flash to how the night before the U.S. soldiers were invading Wakanda. Wakanda. So I was really, like Quinn said, I I really like that opening scene because remember, she is still mourning the Black Panther. So she's the queen of Wakanda, but she's mourning her son. You know, we say Black Panther, but that's her son in the storyline. And so I thought that that was a really good moment of how you still have to keep going. Yes, and 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 you also have to be prepared for what's to come because every time uh, one rain ends the next rain will be challenged. It will always be met with challenge. And I just think it's my, it's, it's at such a time like this with Queen Elizabeth, even though it's way different, mm-hmm. but still she, I mean, nobody served as long as her. Right. So now it's kind of like, what do we do? It's just kind of in the air. Very. Um, when somebody has held a role and did it well as far as keeping order, the person that comes behind that has a, some big shoes. Big to shoes to fill. And I think that as we get back into Wakanda forever, I feel as though from that point, you know, as as you all, those that may decide to go see the movie, because a few spoilers that we give yeah. aren't going to take away the movie, but I feel as though as you continue to watch, right, you will see a scene where, you know, Angela Bassett's character is speaking to Suri. I'm not sure of her first name, but the woman who plays Suri, which is Black Panther's sister. There's a scene where she takes her to like basically the jungle Mm -hmm. and they are by the beach rather and they are having a conversation about grieving so we another key point we want to bring up about the movie uh quentin brought up power rain leadership another point we want to bring up is the grieving aspect so as we all know god rest chadwick so chadwick Boseman. we recognize that the world as well as some people that are fans were grieving this this gentleman. And so Marvel, the producers of Marvel, they, uh, the Marvel producers of Black Panther, trying to get it correct, everybody. (laughs) They wanted to make sure that they honored Chadwick Boseman. Well, throughout the movie is where I'm trying to get at. You will see various moments where the characters are still working through their grief. So even though these are fictional characters, we are seeing a real life expression of how people deal with grief. Mm -hmm. And some people 
Obviously, there are different ways to deal with it. But there are some people who deal with grief where they physically burn almost like a ritual, mm -hmm. physically burn the clothes, their garment clothes or their grieving clothes um, to, to signify that they are at the end of the morning. Of, at the end of the morning. And so in that scene, you are seeing Angela Bass's character um, telling Suri that it's time for you to burn your garments, your grieving garments. Well, we about to really spoil it now. Boop, 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 boop. Angela Bass's character dies. So, because that character dies, Go ahead. because that character dies, see, we telling y'all some, some spoilers, but it don't take away the movie. So, because Angela Bass's character dies... You need more context. Uh, so, you have to watch the movie. Yeah, you have to watch the movie to see how it got to that point. But when she dies, remember, what does she tell Suri in the previous scenes? Burn your garments. Mm -hmm. But as the movie continues, Suri had to put those garments back on to bury her mother. Mm -hmm. So what we saw is in Black Panther, the first movie, Suri, you know, they closed out the movie. But coming into Wakanda Forever, mm -hmm. we came into the movie, because we didn't tell y'all that part, but we came into the movie with a funeral procession. Yes. So you start the movie in the white garments, which is why everybody, we, I, we all didn't know this, but that's why everybody was pushing to wear white to the premieres. Um, Don't know where that came from, but whoever it was, it was kind of on point because they started the movie in all white. Um, So moving right along, we open up the movie in, in a funeral procession. You continue through the movie when Angela Bassett's character says, hey, burn your garments. You continue through the movie. Angela Bassett's character is no longer in the picture. Suri had to put those garments back on. For me, that signifies something for me. Your process is not my process. Angela Bass's character made peace with the Black Panther's death. Suri's character, Suri the character, had not made peace with her brother, Black Panther's death. Mm -hmm. So as you continue to watch the movie, you will see the changes of this character when she finally does make peace. So for me, I like that, even though, you know, I got my full perspective of the movie. As I reflect, I can actually see the significance of the garment and the significance of why Suri could not burn the garment. Now, did Suri know her mom was going to not make it through the movie or through that situation? Obviously, no. But I'm just saying people are quick to say, it's time but I, I'll use that. And just because this year alone, I've had to deal with my own, the death of my own brother. Yeah. So sometimes death grows you up in a way that you didn't see before. Mm -hmm. um, it makes you step into a role that you may not have been prepared for or that you may have kind of ran away from or kind of that person made it a bit easier mm -hmm. um, in some capacity. Right. And now that they're gone, it's like, what do, you know, I got to feel my, my side and that side now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you never, I mean, you, you get time. It, it's a time thing. Like you said, everybody mourns in their own, own time way. yeah yeah in their own time as well um but the other thing i was gonna point out too was that in, in this movie i always say movies have a 
significance to reality. Yes. Um, and the one thing I want to point out is that when the leader dies, we could be mourning, but someone else is rejoicing because opportunity awaits. Ooh. So the level of vulnerability in mourning. And that's why it's very important that you have a strong team around you, a strong family mm -hmm. around you. Um, During that process. Yes, because in your state of vulnerability, you make unrational decisions. Mm -hmm. Irrational, you know, that you're just not... <sighs> They're questionable. Yeah. And you need someone there to kind of be the voice of reason. Yeah. With wisdom. Yes. Because of the fact that you need that, that's, I'm trying to say, you said it best, but I'm trying to say like almost like a foundation. Kind of like what the tribal leader is. He was the wisdom of the group. Yes. He yeah. was there for wisdom and counsel. Based on Black Panther, that was Black Panther's wishes that he would be the wise counsel to serve. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, I think in the last stages, God gives you the ability to see things that others will not be able to see, but to allow you to see it to help them prepare, to prepare for what's coming. Yes. And it was time, like the timing couldn't mm -hmm. have been better. So that's why I say, it was set in place properly because had she not had anybody in her ear, any wise counsel, I mean, mm. and even with wise counsel, she still. Yeah. Y'all have to see the decision that she made. We done told y'all a few spoilers. We'll admit that. But <laughs> if you still listen to this point, you we still want you to watch it because our perspective is very jumpy. Mm -hmm. So, you have to go watch it for yourself to really get a full understanding of where we're coming from. But even with those spoilers, it does not take away. The storyline has a lot more to it. Now, I'm going to throw in Kev and Angel's podcast. Um, here's the thing, because when they were having this conversation, Angel said one thing, and I'm paraphrasing. Angel said one thing that I really kind of want to bring up in our conversation. Mm -hmm. So she made the statement, I would give the movie a seven mm -hmm. because of the fact that I didn't need the procession. I didn't need the grieving scene. I didn't need that process part. Mm -hmm. That She's coming from an actress's perspective. So she brought up a lot of key things that we, as but general viewers, wouldn't think about. Now clarify which grieving. So, so she was saying, because like throughout the movie and you can, you know, mm -hmm. throughout the movie, you see them basically grieving Black Panther in, in some capacity. You saying the continuous grieving yeah, yeah, yeah. multiple times. Yeah, at some point she was saying the opening was good, the funeral procession was good, but after that, give me the movie. The movie. Do you agree with her statement? I do. I, I, I do. Do you agree with her rating and her statement? Yes. Her, her her rating was a seven, and that was her statement. Her rating was actually really fair. That's, okay, that's fair. Um, <laughs> just because Chadwick Boseman ain't in, I'm I'm sorry. I, he's, he's and that's probably what the producers were thinking. They were like, "Yo, they did the best they could. They did the best they could because they had to turn that movie around." And it's a hard movie to turn around because he played that they role. They built was, that movie. No. There are certain roles. If you go back in the history of movies. Just like Joker. Yes. There are certain people that are That's their role. Called. I don't care if they don't do nothing else in life. That's your role. That's your role. Like, Tina Turner. For example. I'm going to just throw something out there. Go ahead. That was mine, Tina Turner. Could you see Angela Bassett, Tina Turner? Could you see anybody else playing the role of Will in Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Could you see? Chris well, they did it with number two. Yeah, but it, you get my point. It's it will never be, be the original. original. Yeah. Could you? And, and it's taking it a step further. Could you see Chris Rock in the role of Fresh Prince back in the day? 
versus, no. you get what I'm saying? So it would be so off. Yeah, it would throw off the flow. The Godfather, a classic movie. Mm-hmm. That man played that movie to the T and as long as I'll get mm-hmm. out, but he, pl- nobody can play it. Right. There are just some iconic roles that you really, other people could do it, yeah. but it just isn't that person. Dr. Doolittle, Nutty Professor. Who could do that besides Eddie? Coming to America, Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> One and two. What was the man name? Ah, uh, goodness. The other man that played beside him. Arsenio Hall. Arsenio Hall, yeah. Yeah, nobody else could play no, that. That duo, that was a good duo. So I think that our point in that segment or that segue is when you build a movie off of a person and the per- the main character is no longer the main character, you have to then bring the sub-character or what do they call them? The supporting the roles. Code. Yeah, the supporter roles. You have to then bring that person up to the lead. And I just feel like, not to say anything about Suri, the character. I though, think she did good. She did awesome. Yeah. She did great. I mean. I, she, I just think that it was built for Chad. Chad. They, I'm going to be honest. They all did great. They all did great. They all did great. Um, they still kept Wakanda alive. I think the new girl. The add-on character. The add-on. It was a little stretch. It was a stretch. Only because the the type of movie Wakanda is. Yes, yes. It needs all it it almost needs all the original people. Yeah. Like Forrest Whitaker was in the first one. That's true. Like But he died. In he the died. First one. But see, <laughs> even in his character dying. With Chadwick Boseman, it was still a strong level. Yeah. yeah. Chadwick just held Michael that. Michael B. Jordan. Chadwick just held that movie. He did. God rest his soul. But you know, moving right along, we brought up the point about leadership. We brought the point about grieving. And we brought up the point about, you know, movies actually being catered to a specific role. So we're going to take a short break and we'll be back. Let's hear from our sponsors. Let's take a moment and shout out a business. This is the voice of the owner of Streamline Media Agency, where we service small business owners with content creation and social media management. This podcast is produced by Streamline Media Agency. Need help? Call us. (laughs) StreamlineMediaAgency.com. <laughs> All right. Thank you to our sponsor. So when we talk about, you know, Wakanda Forever and all the points that we mentioned, um, what what would you say would be like that that closing point? So we won't give it all away. What's your if you could just summarize the movie for somebody, what would you say? If I could summarize it, I think <laughs> it it was not a like I said, it was not a bad movie. It was mm-hmm. just we so used to Chadwick Boseman being Black Panther Tar. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the world of fans are still in a grieving mourning yeah. process, even with that. So to sum up the movie. I think it gives us a glimpse of what's possible. Okay, explain that. Wakanda is a... It's not reality. Right. But it's a glimpse of what reality could be. Okay. Within our culture. Mm Mm-hmm. It's possible. What's possible? It's possible for us to be sustainable even within our own race. Okay, so you're basically co- talking about African Americans. Yes. Like, having a a world, if you will, where we are the leaders, we are the yes, sharecroppers, or, we are the... But see, the thing is, and that's where I wanted to, and I'm glad you brought that point, 
when you think about it, it's no different than Ghana okay. or Johannesburg, Africa. Mm -hmm. They all come to the United Nations meeting. So we're just, we are adding profits mm -hmm. to the world, but we want our own sustainability as well. Right. So I think that is where it gives us a glimpse of what could be if we if we shift our minds mm -hmm. and if we learn group economics. Okay. Like nothing happens alone. Right. And I think that was the power of Wakanda. The, the vibranium, that that thought process. Mm -hmm. When I think about vibranium, I think about so much illness and disease is so much now than prior. Yeah. And we have more technology than ever before. We have more access. We have more access. It's just in our culture, I think we have to dig deeper mm -hmm. in technology. Yeah. You said that earlier food supply. We mm -hmm. got to start thinking in our culture, like the Latino community, they think come they, together. They come together. Which what I said earlier, you know, mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by the fact that we can still believe in that American dream, you know, freedom for all and um, the pursuit of happiness and all but, of that, right? But we've said American dream. That's what's been indoctrinated. That's true. But we need to consider the culture dream. What is the culture dream? The culture dream is to be able to sustain, to be able to honestly have those natural resources and raw materials to survive. Like if there was no grocery store, what would we do? We don't, we got to have the skill set. Mm -hmm. You can have the mindset, but if you don't have the skill set. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. So I think it gives us a glimpse into the future of um African American people of what we can do. Um not when to, we come together. Yeah, and it's not yeah. to throw any other race out there, but it's just that our race has been behind for so long. Behind the eight ball. Yes. Yeah. I would say as a closing mark about what kind of forever is that, you know, anytime I see fictional movies, like obviously movies that aren't real it does still give me you know those glimpses of reality i think quentin said that earlier and so my my complete summary is this wakanda forever is signifies to me that there is still life there's still leadership there's still um a flow of currency and productivity within this place, right? Because they said Wakanda. Wakanda was like their chant or is their chant of like togetherness of like, you know, this X means we're covered. Like when they throw that X up, that means we're together, we're covered, we got each other. A unified, a symbol. unified symbol. And so for me, I know it's a movie, I know it's fictional, but I can honestly say it just gives you that hope for me. But fiction can become reality. Yeah that we can come together, we're covered, we got each other. So that's what I that's how I take the movie. There was there was a moment and I, I'm a processor by nature. So in the moment of the movie, Quentin said, what you think? I'm like, it was okay. But now that I can really sit back and digest, I can honestly say there were a lot of great um moments that were written in and created to help that movie come to life so even though Chadwick Boseman is Black Panther in all of our opinions they still did the movie was still yet powerful even in his absence and oh my goodness Marvel did all they could to mm -hmm. showcase that man throughout the movie and I think so yeah the one uh, you know <clears throat> just me. as some side notes just the one thing we saw more of in this one was we saw more United States transitions in Wakanda mm -hmm. versus the original. Mm -hmm. We didn't see as much 
communication with the United States and Wakanda as Wakanda forever. We didn't see that in the original Black Panther. That's true. So it just shows, like I said, it's giving you some glimpse. It's fictional, but it shows you that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Um, We can truly be a United Nations and not just have the title. and, And with that, I think it's very important that we all become more cultured overall we we mm-hmm. we should learn other people's culture what what you know because how do we not know because we haven't been of course at this time but how do we know ghana is not like that yeah how do we know, you know? johannesburg is don't just look like you know Wakanda. <laughs> right but we will know in the future because what we have our passports so, so. Okay, so let's go to our closing question. So our closing question is, what would be our ideal life in 5, 10, and 20 years? What's our ideal life? So five years from now would be 2027, Mm -hmm. 10, will be 2032 and then 20 will be 2042 Mm. so what do you think honestly 2024 will be our five year anniversary being married Mm -hmm. so just thinking about what we said three years ago and then with 2024 being so close a year and some change away you know what do you say? With uh, with our personal five year mark coming up, mm-hmm. are we close to the goals? Are we? Is there still some work? What do you say? There's still some work. We are. I say we're mm-hmm. about fifty fifty. Um, at this point, it's just about making time. Honestly, in the rawest form, making no time. I mean, making time and making no excuses. Okay. So I think that has been a lot of times it, your past is your teacher for your future. Okay. If you grab those nuggets from the past, those are the gems that's going to lead you to your treasure. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we got distracted by outside sources. Okay. We got to learn how to never disrupt the internal Mm -hmm. Um, make sure that that is a priority so what's what would be our ideal life because you about to go into your oh god boom (laughs) shakalaka so our ideal life would be in 2024 let's start with that even though i gave a different year in the beginning of this in 2024 a new city okay so by 2024 a new city and what a new city and um, honestly, operating in the things we desire to do career wise okay. and business, like business and career, because mm-hmm. we're very business oriented. So I think both our goals are to honestly uh, work for ourselves, but be able to provide opportunities for other people. Okay, and I know that even though the car says 5, 10, 20 from this moment of recording, Mm -hmm. which is in November of 2022, Mm -hmm. I want to use when we got married. So when we got married in 2019, five years will be 24. Ten years will be 39. No, 29. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 29. So in 2024, we said new city and operating our businesses what about 2029 2029 i definitely want us to have a secured home like mm-hmm. even if it's because i just believe we're gonna i believe we may have more than one home mm-hmm. but that one home that we can always come to like that is the family home Mm-hmm. No matter what what's going on in life, we will just stop and go back home for a moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I I just believe that you know 
2029, I want us to have a, a solidified home that we are buying or have purchased. That's mm -hmm. the goal. Um, and then that 20 year mark. 20 years. So from 20 years will be 2039. So 2039. 2039, honestly, at that point, I we, our kids will be grown and out the house. That is the goal. Yeah, so 20, 2024, if God says so, we shall be parents. Um, and then they'll be out the house, so we're gonna rejoice with travel. But <laughs> but no, we I I I still say that now, I ain't gonna lie, but um what I will say too is um, definitely want my master's degree, potentially my doctor degree um, in education or educational technology, uh, instructional design, something along those lines. And obviously, I want to be working in higher education um, and, of course, working for myself. But I do I would like to help others in the capacity of like a career coach. Mm -hmm. So I do know that that's definitely on my goal list. For us, our ideal life is traveling. Um, uh, no matter what status, five year, ten year, twenty year, we want to travel. Roller car seat, baby carry on with the baby on you. We, we want travel. to travel. So traveling is our jam. Like we love it. You know, um, we are actually taking our first cruise in twenty twenty three. Um, so we are definitely the traveling type, want to experience new things in life. And that's why we got the passports, because I we mean, just want to yeah. have no excuses about travel. And the thing about it, like, who? why limit opportunity? Right. If we got our passports and someone calls us to speak overseas. We're ready. We're ready. And that's where I think, as I sum it up, with that 10, 20 year. Mm -hmm. Once it at that 20 year mark, I just really want us to be like optional retired where we kind of flow like we want to, mm -hmm. but we we still provide value. Like yeah. I don't think when you that retire word, you never really retire when you have so much value in you. Mm -hmm. Um at that point it's just time to disperse it out. Yep. Um, so you higher education, media, uh, me, business, general personal development and strategy. Um, I just I'm always a global thinker. So I'm just like traveling with a purpose every time. So that's where I see us at those 10, 20 years, even with children, even with, you know, last sidebar. <laughs> So we ended up, as you guys may know, we ended up traveling to New Jersey. Um, if you follow us on Instagram, if you follow us on Facebook, you would have saw that we posted about our trip to New Jersey. So please go look at that reel. But one thing is we really want to just go above and beyond with everything. Like... No matter what, while we were traveling, we saw people travel with three and four and five <laughs> kids. Yeah. So we are definitely looking at the opportunity to travel with our future family for sure. Um, so I hope you guys like that question, what your ideal life will be like in five, 10 or 20 years. Hey, you know how we do. Comment down below. Let us know. What would it look like for you? So Listen, if you heard our stomachs growl, that means we got to wrap this show up. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and sign off. This has been another episode of Resilient Love, Wakanda Forever. All right. See you in the next one. Bye.
Thank you to all listeners and subscribers. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Leave us a five-star review on Apple so that we can continue sharing resilient love. Thanks for listening.